Hey there folks and welcome back to the IMCDB project. I of course am your host CDB, you are not, and today we're going to do a shave with Shannon's uh, 25th Street Lime. You've seen this periodically, uh, it's one of my favorites. I love the lime, I love Shannon and Brian from Shannon Soaps. Good people, uh, people whom I consider to be friends, so take that for <laughs> what it's worth. I do like the product though, I genuine, genuinely do. They are uh, good family folks producing a good product. And of course, the Hawk uh, by Razor Rock. I believe this is version two. It's been a while since I've used this one. Um, it, is the, it is your Artist Club style blade, lightweight aluminum. I like that razor a lot. And we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, wet the face. Oh, West Coast Shaving Brush, which you've seen me use a lot. I'm gonna buy one. <laughs> I keep saying it, I really am. I, I was trying to not buy anything for a real, real long time. I'm gonna break down and buy it because I just like it. I use it all the time. Anyway, I want to touch on a few things um, today. A few comments I've gotten, a few emails. First of all, thanks for those of you who have emailed me. Emailing is the way to reach me and get a response. If you comment, most likely I won't see it. Sometimes I do, most times I don't. Um, I did get a few email, and again, the email is cdb at imcdb.com. That is the way to reach me. And generally I respond to those within a couple of days. Uh, every now and then, one of those will get caught in a spam filter or something, I don't see it. But generally, I try to do my best to answer those. Comments, I never answer on, on YouTube. That is pretty much your area to discuss the videos with other people. If you want a response from me, email me at cdb at imcdb.com and I will uh, try to answer as best I can. Anyway, I did get uh, an email from a gentleman and his name is Mike, I won't use his last name. And he was considering, he's been a wet shaver for uh, a year and a half, I wanna say, 18 or 19 months, I think he said. And uh, he's considering making videos, but he's somewhat put off because he reads the comments on some of my videos and there are people that make negative comments. First of all, I gotta say, Mike, if you're going to produce public facing social media content, you gotta be prepared for negative comments. People, especially uh, comments from anonymous accounts. And for me, when it's anonymous account, and if you if you use a like I am CDB Chris Bailey my name, people know who I am CDB is. But if you use an anonymous account, and it, there's no real tie like Nick Shaves, we know who Nick is, and Mantic Fifty Nine, we know who he is. But if if it's just an anonymous name that you can't tie to a person, a face, nothing, I don't put any credibility whatsoever into those comments, and I generally don't. I just don't consider it. And so the first thing that I would say is first, be prepared for criticism because you're putting your content out there and people are gonna criticize it. And some of it is fair criticism and some of it isn't, but you're gonna get both and you're gonna get trolling and that just comes with the territory. And sometimes it's, you know, ridiculous, but it, it's the internet. People get to hide and say nasty things to people for whatever the reason, maybe their life isn't great and they take pleasure in you know, trying to tear down other people, but the trolling thing, it just happens. So be prepared for it. A lot of people are keyboard commandos who say things on the internet that they would never say to people in person. And so if you're not willing to accept that, then you know it's probably not best to put content out for the public to consume and, and, and come on, comment on. And the other thing I wanna say is, if there's some value in it, the people who are serious will reach out to you and give you positive feedback and you'll know that you're doing things that are of value. So you'll get you'll get the trolling, you'll get the negative stuff, and you'll just get um, criticism from people who disagree. In my opinion, criticism from real people who disagree is, is valid and should be taken into consideration. But the trolling for anonymous, uh, the anonymous accounts and the people just always come by and say something. You know, they're making personal, they're not talking about the content. They're making personal attacks and call it name. You could just throw that out. Uh, you have to think of it 
the way I think of it. Because I've seen people who have, since I've been doing videos, five years, um, have been coming by and just calling me names and stuff. And I think, just keep on coming back and watching. Because you're, think about this, from the perspective of the, the uh, content producer. I'm producing content, they don't like it, and yet they keep coming back. And they're spending time that they can't get back to make the comments, to give you a view, maybe give you a thumbs down. So what? Uh, they're still coming by. So take it with a grain of salt and understand that, hey, they're coming to see you. And so even if it's negative, they're coming to watch your content. You don't even know who they are. You wouldn't know them if they fell on you. So take it, you know, you don't have to take it to heart. That's what I'm saying. Yes, it can be annoying at times, particularly when people take things you say out of context and, and some of the things that have been done just ridiculous. But generally speaking, the folks who just keep coming back and they always have something negative to say or something about your appearance or just nothing related to their video, not a fair criticism or a point of view, you just don't worry about that stuff. You just take it as a victory. They're coming by and clicking on my content still. <laughs> so, you know, who's thinking about who? Look at it from that perspective. And that is the way I look at it. Uh, number two, just be prepared for disagreements and handle those civilly. There are people who strongly disagree with what I have to say, especially when it comes to value, because, you know, um, it happens. And be prepared to be taken out, taken out of context. There are some people who watch my material who do not listen. They hear only what they want to hear. They do not take the entire message into consideration. They take little key parts and seize on it and then want to debate it rather than looking at it holistically and taking the whole message. And I always say for me, and I always say based on my experience and what I have done and so forth. And so be prepared for people to, to answer questions from people who just flat didn't pay attention to the content, got totally the wrong message, and are taking from it what they want to and attributing things to you that you didn't say or mean. And so that does happen. Those are the things that, you know, you have to be cognizant of. And if you can deal with those things, then go ahead and make your channel and try to pr present value however you see fit. That's kind of my advice on that front. The other thing I was going to do today is sort of clarify. I'm always clarifying because again, it sort of goes back to the last point I made where people take snippets of information, attribute what they want to to it rather than my meaning. And that is when we talked about high value products and, and high priced ingredients. I'm aware that there are cases where sometimes it certainly makes a difference and I'm open to that possibility. But what I tried to say and tried to make clear is I'm not saying across the board, you're always been hoodwinked and bamboozled. That's not what I said. I said, be open to the possibility that you may not be getting that much for your money, or you may find something that works just as well that doesn't cost as much. And in my case, based on my use case, based on my experience, someone who has bought, look, at one time I owned pills, um, one blade, uh, above the tie, Wolfman. I had a top row of razors that were all super premium, right? All good razors, Grant. All good razors. But did it really do that much for me? No. And most of them I don't own now. I own maybe one of those. Most of them I don't own. I just, there was no compelling reason. But I will say, if you're going to spend that kind of money, I think hardware or razor is probably the place place to do it because it's going it's going to last you forever. So I can justify that to a certain extent. It's just with software. Um, I think try you know try yourself, but don't be turned off by the budget stuff and don't let other people close your mind to it. That's really what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say you should never. Uh, spend your money on certain things. I'm saying judge it on the basis of performance, not the buzz around it, not what the manufacturers are trying to convince you of. But really, how did that shave go? Was it tremendous? Was it worth a $70 soap? 
when you bought that $70 soap during that shave, was it four times better? Was it three times better? Almost never is the answer for most people. Is it going to be that much better? Is it going to be seven times, six times better than a $10 soap? Nope, most likely not. But there is certainly the possibility of some incremental uh, advantages and important uh, performance improvements, but I'm also asking you to be cognizant of the fact that when you plop down your money for something like that and you've read and consumed all this material, there is the potential for a placebo effect and uh, having some preconceived notions take grip. Trust me, I am somebody who has fallen victim to that. All I'm doing is telling you based on my experience what occurred, all right? So I fell victim to all that stuff, and there are plenty of people who do. And then later, a lot of them go, eh, you know, that was kind of silly. Now that said, if you are somebody who just really believes and strongly believes that that is your experience, that it works far better than it does, because ultimately it's your experience. But what I'm trying to do is keep the folks' minds open who are in that budget realm and who are in that sort of middle ground where they'll sort of try about anything. The high-end people who are going to pay the most for everything they get, I'm not going to reach ever because we're just not going to agree on anything maybe other than razors because our experience are just different. But those of you who are just beginning and who are just getting into this hobby and are looking at looking in these groups and on these channels that all these people using the super premium stuff. Oh, I gotta have that. I gotta. I've been there. I'm speaking to you from experience. Now, it's my experience, and yours may not, you know, intersect with it perfectly. But I'm just saying, if you try some things, you might save yourself some money that perhaps then you can put into another hobby. Maybe you can put a few bucks away for your child's college, save for a home. Buy a nice knife or whatever hobby you, cigar, you know. Um, maybe you can save a little bit having not spent $70 for a soap. Um, but if you choose to, you have the money, you like it, then please go on doing it. I'm not criticizing you if you do. I think a lot of people just go, ah, he's a, you know, he's just, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus who does it. I make comments about, I make, a, you know, a flip comment the other day about the ASCOD and, there are certain people who fit that mold. There are people who are budget-minded. There are people who are sort of in the middle that'll try high-end and they'll try pretty much everything. Then there are strictly high-end people. And the strictly high-end people, their behaviors tend to be that way in most products. Like no matter what it is, they're going to pay, they're going to get the most expensive coffee uh, making device. They're going to get the most expensive cigars. They're going to get the most expensive lighter, everything. And so they just sort of have that personality. But if you actually start, uh, the inspector and I the other day were talking about uh, cigar lighters. And I, I had a, uh, I don't smoke cigars. I, I, I sampled them for a while. But anyway, Vertigo lighters, some cheapos that I bought, work every single time. I refill it. I never have any problems. I bought some, some more expensive Zycar and like 100 bucks plus. They didn't work with a crap. And so I paid more and they did not work. They were five times the cost of the, uh, I can't remember the, the Vertigo little cigar lighter and they did not perform as well. So what I'm saying is it's not always the case that it works better. In some cases it assuredly does. And there are some places where I'll spend more right now here in the restroom. I will buy decent toilet paper. I think it's worth the money. I will buy decent batteries. I think it's worth the money. I think it's worth the money to invest in name brand or sometimes more expensive products. But keep in mind, a lot of a lot of you take generic medication. There are a fraction of the cost of the name brand medication. Fraction of the cost. The name brand could cost two hundred dollars. The generic could cost five, ten with insurance, and it does basically the same thing. Some of these products are the same. Um, you can get a similar scent, like you can get Creed, um, Green Irish Tree, Tweed Soap, or you can get Sterling, uh, Shark Dress Man. And one's way more expensive than the other. And the one that's way more expensive, in my opinion, doesn't do anything. The other one doesn't do, and is way more expensive. Now, it has a nice 
wood tub and you can put it on the shelf and you can show your friends, hey, look at my $60 soap or whatever, 50, I don't know what it costs. But that's it. And so I'm saying if, if displaying that in a photo for the world is your objective, then go ahead and get the most expensive thing. But if really shaving with it and getting a real significant improvement is what you're after, in some cases, you're not going to get that. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not saying across the board in every case, but I'm saying there are products like that where you pay far more and it in some cases is not as good as its cheaper counterpart. That's just where I stand. I will never ever bend the knee to the Ascot crowd who just want to convince you that you must buy everything expensive. That is not to say that there's zero virtue in it. I'm just saying I will never say, oh yeah, you should always buy the most expensive ingredients, the most expensive soap. I will not, never ever bend the knee because I've been down that road. And based on my experience, which is the only experience I can really talk from, and I guess I can somewhat shed light on the feedback that I get, the majority of emails I get are, are people who say, thank you for speaking on this. I wish I would, I, I would seen this sooner, or I'm just now getting into it and thank you. And so you folks uh, are the ones I'm talking to. And if you are one of those people who have going hog wild, and then you come back and you go, oh, that was a mistake. Share this with somebody who's just getting into, the <laughs> share these type of videos with somebody who's just getting into the hobby so they don't get pulled. And I had people trying to tell me. I had people like Zach Plavridis, Artie Canterbury, and others going, man, you're on a tear. Uh, it's not really necessary. You're going to settle down over time. I didn't listen. You have the opportunity to listen. Uh, however, as I always say, make your own decision. Your experience is your experience. And I can't tell you what your experience is, but I can surely tell you what mine is. And I'm telling you with 100% uh, integrity that very little compelling reason from my standpoint, based on my use case, to grab uh, something like a Creed um, Irish Tweed soap versus Sterling Sharp Dress Man. That's my opinion. Some will agree, some won't, but thanks for watching all the same. Till next time I've been your host CDV, you're not, God bless.